for, there was a NASA study that found that a 26 minute nap increased cognitive functioning by 34%. 26 minute nap increased functioning by 34%. They found that a 45 minute nap not only increased functioning, but did so for an eight hour period of time. So there was this extended period of high cognitive functioning when a 45 minute nap was taken. Research has found that when you take a nap in the middle of the day or at the end of the day, it actually has the effect of as if you've woken up from a full night's sleep so that the rest of your day, the rest of your evening can be one where you are alert and not teetering away. So this idea that you're gonna either force yourself to stay awake, who drinks coffee, who drinks tea, who takes some stimulant or another, right? We have all these things that we do to try and keep us going, right? Because we're, and might we naturally begin to sort of tap a little more directly what's going on inside of us, listen a little bit more clearly. For example, the due diligence, the jurisite mindfulness lesson for these thoughts that come along that say, I've got to stay up or else I'm going to, or if I don't finish this tonight, then something, we do a due diligence inquiry, which is to say to ourselves, is this true? Rather than just have a thought and believe it, and stay up, and do what we need to do, and then crash, and then maybe not be so effective the next day, because we've got the sleep debt that's growing and growing and growing, and we're not aware because we can't really articulate that our performance is poor because we're fooling ourselves into thinking that our performance is not poor, we ask ourselves, is this thought true? And oftentimes, the thought that we haven't investigated, but the thought that nonetheless is driving our decision making, when we investigate it, is it true that I'm going to not be able to be ready for the test if I don't stay up tonight to get this done? It might not be true. When we inquire the due diligence, are the representations that we're telling ourselves true, much of the time, we go back and go, no. That's actually not true. Or we say, I don't know. And it creates the opportunity or the space to maybe do something different. So for example, when you may decide as we finish up on napping, oh, I'm going to do this nap. And then you go down to sit and take the nap, but everyone else is in the library. And by the way, lots of schools now have napping areas. There's more and more of them. So students can nap in the middle of the day because this has been found to be so important. But if the culture doesn't embrace it, people are going to not do it because they're fearful of what they're missing out on, for example. If I don't go in there and study, then I'm not going to be ready for my class tomorrow. Is that true? Well, let's find out. Maybe I'll be more ready. Maybe I'll be more energized. So this is the question that we have to ask ourselves if we want to change our behavior. Because otherwise, the habits, we all have learned lots of things about food and eating and have been inspired by it, only to return to the way we've always eaten. We've always learned lots of things about Lots of things, relationships, how to work with other people, and then we try it, and then we go back to, so old habits die hard, notwithstanding the best of our intentions. Something, and this is what mindfulness is all about, and this isn't a mindfulness conversation, but we'll bring it up in a couple of points. How do we do something different as we walk out of this class? 